So you wanna be strong and flexible, but you're having a hard time actually fitting in your flexibility training at the end of your session? Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to get strong and mobile during your workout. I was not a flexible child. I couldn't do the splits, a bridge, or a walkover, which I vividly remember because both my sisters could do those things and I couldn't. Then I decided I wanted to become more of an athlete, which meant I had to improve my mobility. But in order to do so, I had to let go of some limiting beliefs that say certain exercises are bad for you, like putting your knees over your toes, that the only time to work on flexibility is at the end of your session and that you should only train limited range of motion which is not true. I believe that this came from the muscle building community because yes if you're doing squats in order to build muscle you don't have to do the full range of motion but if you want to create an athletic mobile body you will want to strengthen your ankles knees hips and spine in that extended range of motion. I'm sure we all know somebody who looks super strong who ended up getting hurt doing like the most minor everyday tasks like they picked up a softball and threw it for the first time and hurt themselves or they twisted and hurt themselves, or even just picking something off the ground. And that's because they only train in a very limited range of motion. So because you're only training in this limited range, you are more susceptible to injury. And of course, we can combat that by actually training our full range of motion to help us in everyday life, whether that's hiking or learning how to handstand or shoulder press or even getting off the ground easier. So today I'm gonna show you a few drills to pick from that will help you create a mobile and strong body that you can control. Let's get into it. The first drill today is the Jefferson curl. And if there's one drill that I want you to try out out of this whole YouTube video, it's this one. The beginner version of this drill is with a kettlebell. If you can already touch your toes, then you'll wanna grab it like this instead. But if you're just starting, you're gonna start like this, rolling your shoulders back, taking a breath, and then curling down, trying to go vertebrae by vertebrae. When you come to that bottom position, I want you to hang for a second and make sure that your hip is stacked over your heel. You don't want your butt sticking out too far. You want them stacked. Hold that for a moment and then initiating from the feet to the glutes up the spine. So just completely reversing the movement. And returning to that start position with the glutes engaged. Once you've mastered it on the floor, you're feeling very comfortable, very controlled, your vertebrae are starting to move independently instead of as one big chunk, then you can take it higher by elevating your feet and you can increase the weight. Just make sure you take time to make those adjustments. So I like to stand with my toes slightly off the edge. If your gym allows you not to have shoes, that would be great. And you can actually grip the edge with your feet because we want the whole back body to be engaged, including the bottom of our feet. So starting nice, tall and strong, hips tuck under. We're gonna go vertebrae by vertebrae all the way down, trying to keep the kettlebell going straight down rather than traveling outwards. When you get here, you might want to stick your butt back, but that's not what we're doing today. We're trying to keep our feet and hips in line. I like to hold for a moment here Make sure everything's engaged before coming back up, initiating the lift from the lower body, from the feet, from the hamstrings, from the glutes that are tucking under, going into the spine and rolling back. You can also adjust this drill to be more passive and do it at the end of your workout. So you can come to this bottom position and you can hang out here for 20 to 30 seconds. And when you're done, you can just put the weight on the ground you can also play with twisting to get the stretch across the side. Or sometimes I like to bend my legs and then extend. And that's the Jefferson curl. The foundational stretch that you can find me doing every single training session is the pancake. But the problem with the pancake is when you're first learning it, you actually don't have the ability to articulate your low spine, let alone connect with your legs. And what happens is most people are just in such a rush to get to the ground that they'll round forward and they'll put their head down, but they're missing the point that we're trying to get the mobility in our low back and also strengthen our glutes here. So we wanna lead with the belly button, be nice, tall and strong, but this is super intense. So there's a way to make it easier and that's by bending 
the knees. But sometimes this isn't enough to help increase your range of motion, so I have a drill for you. Begin by finding a box or a bench where you can firmly plant your feet. Come to the edge of it, and then you can open up your legs. You want to be anchoring through the outside of your feet using your glutes. We're gonna pick up a kettlebell, and we're gonna pretend that there's a string from the kettlebell to our belly button, and that's gonna help us lead with our belly button rather than leading with our forehead. So grabbing your dumbbell, you're gonna come up, pretend that we have this connection here, lower down, getting that arch in that low back, being really strong here. I'm using my glutes, I can already feel it. I'm keeping my knees open, and then coming back up. And then back down again. Again, the glutes are staying so strong in here. I'm initiating the lift through my legs, and the dumbbell is staying straight down. It's not going too far forward. And then once you've been able to actually arch your low back instead of having it super rounded and you're feeling that connection leading with your belly button, you can increase the difficulty by increasing the range of motion by grabbing your kettlebell like this instead. When that's feeling really good and you can connect with the top of your glutes, your legs are really strong, we can take it to the ground to the full pancake. You can begin by limiting the range of motion using a yoga block and touching it with your belly button. Moving towards the ground. My glutes are nice and strong there. And then of course you can use a weight. The tendency though with the weight is to round your back, make sure you're arching and leading with that belly button. Here I'm very strong through the outside of my leg my glutes are very strong. Nothing is relaxed. Unless you're doing this at the end of your session, in which case you can turn it into a passive hold and you can just begin to chill and relax here. If you already do a leg day, this drill is gonna be so easy to incorporate and it is deep, narrow squats. You can do it before your regular weighted squats or you can do these weighted. But first, I want you to master them body weight. Eventually, this will turn into our pistol squats. For a pistol squat, we do need to have that deep, narrow squat, but with one leg. When you're working on this drill, if you tend to wear very padded running shoes, you might have limited range of motion in your ankles. So you might find that when you come down, your ankles are off the ground if you're barefoot. So what I want you to do is start practicing barefoot or in barefoot shoes with a little ledge. Over time, I want you to decrease that height of the ledge until you can do it flat on the ground. So for the first few weeks, you might do it like this. And then just over time, you'll eventually begin to do it on the ground. This drill is also just helpful for everyday mobility, for getting off the ground easier if you're playing on the ground, or if you just have to stand up without using your hands. This is such a useful drill in order to gain that mobility. To increase the intensity of this, you're gonna add weight. So you're gonna grip the bar, have your elbows down, core pulled in, come down with control, get to that bottom position. You can hang out for a second here, and then pushing it through the feet, through the outside of the leg, using your glutes coming to standing. What I don't want you to do is just to come down really fast and then bounce out of it because we've lost control there. So again, using the glutes, core pulled in, we're gonna sit back, gripping through the feet, taking a moment here, and then pushing up with control. If you're looking to strengthen your lower body for active splits or numerous other drills, this is a great exercise to do. So you can use a wall or a box, come down, keeping your feet in line with your hips, so I don't want you on a tightrope, I want them each on their own train tracks. You wanna bring your knee to the wall or to the box. As a beginner, that might be challenging, so you might have your knee away from the box and that is fine. Once you're in position and you're not twisted to the side, you're not opening up, your hips are squared, you then begin to tuck your hip under, squeezing the glutes and coming down and back up. The goal is to feel very active on this side of your body. From there, you can begin to use a weight.
and then you can increase the intensity by bringing the weight overhead. Now we're using a lot more stabilizers and you're gonna sink down, staying engaged and come back up. You can also do this as an active hold at the bottom and you can choose to strengthen the hamstring by pulling your foot off of the wall and closing the distance in between your glute and your foot. If this is your last drill of the day, you can turn it into more of a passive hold by extending this front leg and just hanging out here, making sure that your hips are staying square and not opening to the side. Over time, you'll begin to lengthen into that split position. And we're back to working our entire back body. This is an intense drill, but it's so amazing because it works so many components at one time. And with calisthenics, we want to be training our body to fire together, to work as a unit. We don't want to spend all of our time doing isolated movements. If we only do isolated shoulder stretches or isolated low back stretches, when it comes to actually asking them to fire together, say in a seven handstand or a Mexican handstand, we won't be able to neurologically connect with all of the tissue. So we use drills like this to teach everything to work together and mobilize together, which is also amazing if you're short on time, this drill is gonna target so much. So let's get into it. If you're a beginner, I'm gonna want you to start with like a small kind of squishy ball or this works great. It will take a little bit of time to figure out where on your back is gonna work best for you. You're gonna to want to reach over, grabbing the dumbbells externally, rotating the shoulders and lifting your low body. Once you've lifted, you wanna arch over the barbell pad and back up, arch over and back up. Once you can do that, you can just straighten your legs. Making sure that you're not holding your breath here. You can play with looking through your arms and internally rotating your shoulders or keeping them externally rotated. And then once you feel safe doing that with the squishy barbell pad, you can move to doing it with a foam roller. The biggest thing here is remembering to breathe. If you're finding it to be a bit scary to find the ground, you can do it with your knees tucked and you can just do those negatives. So kick up. instead of lifting up and down. And then you can increase the height. You could simply add on a few of today's drills into your current workout routine, or you can create an entire weighted mobility day. And if you're serious about getting more flexible, combine some of these drills with my morning stretch routine. And if weights are your thing, then check out my calisthenics leg day. Thank you so much for being here.